Hello, Author Tube. Um, this is the Author Tube in the Trenches tag by Strip Covered Lit. Um, I saw Steve do it, and then I went back and watched Adrian um, do it, and it's a really interesting tag for writers. Um, so let me just jump right in here. Do you have a sweetheart novel, short story, or poetry project? A project that turns you into a serious writer? Um, I don't know if this is a... If this is like something that you've already done, then I would say Black Star Canyon. And... Um, People could argue that that made me a serious writer or not. Um, but if it's something that is I'm wanting to do or working on now, I would say um, Fagman, which is my um, kind of like dystopian um, sci-fi kind of thing. Um, it's making me think <clears throat> on a higher level than just writing something entertaining or writing something that I want to write. It's making me think of um, like the temperature of today. And I hate when people put um, either social or religious or political views and stuff. And so this is like probably the closest I would get to doing something like that. <clears throat> uh, do you, um, do you, or do you ever plan to work on a series length project? <clears throat> Most of the stuff I do is series length. Um, Black Star Canyon, Brain Thief, um, Gavel, Hitman Black, um, all of those things. Hello. All of those things are, um, like, <clears throat> like more of an ongoing, um, thing. Let's see here. Oh, and I do have a couple others that, um, weirdly I haven't started because I don't know where they should start from. And I feel like I should just take those ideas um, and just do short stories with them until like I feel like I have a better grasp on the world and the character. But um, that just hasn't happened yet. Um, thoughts on mixed form projects. Short stories that contain poems, novels that contain short stories, etc. I'm not a fan, but... I was for a long time, and I come and go through this idea. I have this like concept album that I wrote, um, and it's like 16 songs, but I feel like it doesn't tell the whole story, so I always wanted to write a book along with it. Um, so like the booklet for the album would be the book or um, write chapters and then when the songs that come up come up um, have the song lyrics be that chapter um, but I just haven't done it yet and like I almost went and did like a Kickstarter for it just so I could get um, a better recording of everything but I just haven't done it yet where do you picture publishing in 10 years? Um, I honestly still think it's going to be in a state of flux where they don't know what's happening. Um, obviously, independents will probably have more avenues than they do now. What I do think, though, is that I can't remember where I heard this or if this was just a test. But they had these like kiosks where you could go up and like order a book and it would print and bind the book um, right there. So it's almost like a 3D printer, but for books. 
I know that sounds stupid because everyone's like, well, it's paper. You print paper. It's just like a printer. But the binding, the cover, hardcover, softcover, whatever, I feel like that will end up being the norm once the publishers, like the big publishers, kind of can break ties with their supplier, their material suppliers, and the people who are actually printing, binding, and doing all that stuff. I feel like, on a business sense, the publishing company will make more money <clears throat> if they're, they are just um, putting the books out there and people could get them whenever they want them. And it's like a print-on-demand thing. But really on demand, not like a print on demand and then you wait a week for it to be shipped to you. Like a print on demand where you wait five minutes while you're drinking your Starbucks kind of thing. And then when that happens, I feel like the indies will quickly find a way to infiltrate that. Or some company will do that for indies. And then you'll just have like book kiosks like next to like soda vending machines kind of thing. Um, if you could have one booktuber review your work, who would it be? Anybody. <clears throat> if any of you guys want, and like, even if it's just like you guys want to read a story or read one of my books or something like that, just let me know down below and I'll send them to you. Like, it's completely fine. You don't have to do a review on it if you don't want to. You can if you want. But if you would like some of my mystery stuff, my horror stuff, my sci-fi stuff, um, just tell me and I'll send you stuff. That's completely fine. Um, writer's quarrels are things of legends. What author alive today would you want to spat? <clears throat> this is the problem because I feel like I only read old dead white guys. So um, I don't think... I read anybody who's alive right now. I was, when Steve did this video, I was trying to think about it. Couldn't think of anybody. And then I watched Adrian's video and I still couldn't think of anybody. Um, so if I come up with somebody who is alive, yeah, I don't know. I really don't. I can't think of anybody. Um, have you ever been a part of a writer's group? Yeah, I've been a part of many writers' groups, but um, I don't feel like they were very strict. And when it turns into me being the one who has to make it strict, that becomes like a job, and I'd rather not do it. So um, that's kind of what's happened. I'm, a, I'm in a writers' group right now <clears throat> that like we don't have like things that we do all the time and we used to show each other our, our works in progress and stuff um, but now it's more of a not like a it's almost like a therapy group like where we just talk about what we're working on and like what we're worried about and marketing problems and things like that um, this one was weird. Do you have a favorite writer's craft book? And the next one is, do you have um, a least favorite writer's craft book? <clears throat> this is so difficult because I feel like writing, and a lot of people would disagree with me on this, and, that, and that, that's completely fine, but I feel like writing is just you telling somebody a story. You know, like you using your um, your personality almost to convey a story. And I feel like when people read, and I am totally guilty of this, but when you start reading craft books, um, you get very conscious of the things you do. And you stop being yourself and you start imitating what other people say. And that, to me, I find with myself and I find with other writers who I know personally, when that happens, you tend to lose your voice a little bit. 
And when I go back to the stuff that, like the first stuff I've ever written, like, let me, let me figure out a better way of saying that. The first published works that I've had, those were written when I had no concept of anything. Um, when I wasn't trying to impress anybody, when I was just trying to, like, get my demons out, I guess you could say. And even though those are not the best written things that I've done, I almost feel like those are my favorite because those are the most real that I had ever been. <clears throat> and um, I miss that. And I used to write a lot more when I wasn't constantly thinking if what I was doing was correct. And so I go through these um, phases of really missing that and trying to recreate that feeling, but I already have those thoughts in my head. So it's, it's almost something that will never happen, you know? It really, really... Mm. It, it's it's frustrating. Now, with that said, my favorite um, craft book, I'm going to change this up a little bit, and I'm going to say um, a podcast, and it's called Writing Excuses that um, Brandon Sanderson and a few other people are on, um, especially the early days of that podcast. Um they are just really knowledgeable, and they give you a lot of different viewpoints of the same um, problem or issue that they're talking about. They're really short episodes. It's just a like really good podcast. That being said, that podcast turned the project I was working on when I first found that podcast into a living hell because I was constantly going back over it and trying to see if the things I were doing were correct or not correct or whatever. And um, it really just... Like, there's a part of me that wishes I never listened to that podcast. So here's the Pandora's box for you. Um, listen to that podcast if you want to constantly second guess everything you ever do. But at least you'll know what you should do and shouldn't do according to the man, whoever the man is. Um, and then my least favorite um, book on writing is probably any book. Um, that's not true. And, like, I know Steve said this, but I found... On writing by Stephen King like I felt like I was getting more of his life story than any advice really and um, I found myself um, annoyed the whole time when I was reading it so then when I would get to some advice I would be so irritated that um, it was hard for me to go, but I think that's because, but I know a lot of people who like swear by that book and that's fine, but I think, um, it's all about expectation. And if you go into a book expecting to find the answers and you don't get those answers right away, your expectations have already made you hate that book. So, um, that's how that goes. But if there is any advice from this that I could like throw out. It's just write a story. Doesn't matter how long the story is. Could be a novel, could be a short story. Write a story and write it the way you talk. Don't write it the way you think people would want to hear you talk or don't write it the way you think books should be read. <clears throat> write a book the way you talk. And just see how you get through it. Chances are you're going to get through it really, really quickly because it's just you talking. And that, and this might be horrible advice. You know, some people might say, ooh, don't listen to that. 
but that is your voice, you know? Like, you don't need to create a character to write your books, you know? You're you. And I feel like a lot of publishing and a lot of writing advice takes you out of the equation. They want you to become who you're supposed to be, who is the... They want you to become the voice that is a normal voice that people are used to reading. Just be you, you know? Um, however you tell a story. I mean, obviously, when I write a book, I don't go, um, ellipses. You know, I don't do that. So uh, there's a little bit of wiggle room there. But be you, you know? And um, I notice a lot of the people who... I would want to tag on this have been tagged, but um, I'll just go ahead and tag my writing homies here. So, um, Peter, Britt, Shan, um, Zane. Zane, do this tag, buddy. Come on. Um, <clears throat> Devin, you know. Devin. Um, so, yeah, do this. And anyone else out there who's writing, um, Definitely. I think there was a question that I missed. I'm going to go back and look real quick because I remember there being something about... Nope, that was it. Okay, so until next time, everybody. I just got to find the off button.